state you come to church in this morning, you don't have to leave the same way that you came. God has been waiting on you all week. He has used us as vessels of instruments to position the service in a conducive manner where he can make himself revealed unto you. Can I tell you, saints of God, that God can be the same to all of us in a different way. Somebody, if you need a healing today, raise your hand if you need a healing in your body. If you need financial help, you ought to raise your hand. Come on, somebody. If you need restoration in your life, you ought to raise your hand. And the Lord told me to pause here and tell you, he can be all of those things at the same time. He can be your counselor. Come on, somebody. He can be your heart fixer. Somebody can wave, say, he'll be a mind regulator. And whatever you need, he can make a way out of the way. And we praise God that he can be everything we need him to be at the same time. Well, this is Pentecost Sunday, and there is a word in the house for the saints of God. If you would stand with me and go to the book of Acts 19, Acts the 19th chapter, uh, there is a word from the Lord, Acts chapter 19. I want to invite you to Acts chapter 19. It is our custom to stand for the reading of God's holy word. If you went to the courtroom, they would tell you to stand as the judge would enter in. Amen. If you were sitting in a place and President Trump came in, they would tell you to stand. And if those men be mortal, praise the Lord, then surely the supreme word of God requires our most teen attention. And so we stand in respect to the written word because the Bible does declare that heaven and earth will pass away. Uh, but the word of the Lord, somebody holler, is eternal. Amen. Praise the Lamb of God. So in Acts chapter 19, I will invite you to verse 1 um, through verse 7. Praise the Lord. And there is a piece of scripture here I believe is fitting for Pentecostal Sunday. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and he f was finding certain disciples. He said unto them, I got a question I need to ask you. I know you go to church every Sunday and I know that you have been to the water. He said, but there's something I have noticed among you that is missing. Have you received, I wish I had some help here, the Holy Ghost since you have believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much have heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So Paul said unto them, well, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, we have been baptized unto John's baptism. And John's baptism, my brothers and sisters, is baptism unto water. Look up, saints. Many of you have received water baptism, but you have not received fire baptism. Praise the Lord. You can cool situations off, but you can't set nothing on fire. Come on, somebody. And uh, you need both is what Paul recognized. You cool under some circumstances, but you don't have the ablazing fire of Jesus to set it off. Okay. So he says unto them, look at verse 4. Then Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, somebody's going to receive it today. Amen. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, somebody holler. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, come on, read the rest of the Holy Ghost. Mm came on them 
And something happened, something happened, something happened, something happened, something. How do I know I got it? Something happened, something, something supernatural took place. And the Bible says, and they spake with tongues and they prophesied. And all the men were about 12. Look over your neighbor, hit the wig off of them on your way to your seat. And tell them something is missing. Mm. That's it. That's it. You may be seated in the presence of God. Something. Uh, something is missing. Lean over to the left and say, neighbor, did you hear what the little boy said? Something is missing. First thing when Paul approaches, he approaches and recognizes um, that when you are trying to change a paradigm, when you are trying to change the customarily, traditional, ordinary way of life, you must always start at the head. Must always start at the head. If it's the head, it's the head of a household. Uh, God would desire that the man of God be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. If, if it's a single mother, who is raising children, he would desire that that head be under the intoxication of the Holy Ghost. And so when Paul shows up here uh, and he recognizes what is going on or what's missing in the church, many times what's missing in the church is missing in the preacher. Y'all, nobody gonna say amen. So he notices, first of all, first of all, where the biggest issue is, and the biggest issue was in the preachers. So in leaving Corinth, he encounters a mighty preacher, he could say it, he could convey it, he could relate it, but he had no power to demonstrate it. Uh, Y'all walk with me here. He, he, he could say it. He could convey it. He could convey the word of God. He could relate it to your practical life, but he had no power to demonstrate it. If you're taking notes, 2 Corinthians says in the, uh, chapter 2 around verse 1, Paul said that when I, glory, he said, when I came to preach to you, I did not come to preach to you with excellency of words. He said, I did not preach to you uh, with psychology and physiology. He said, but when I preach to you, I preach to you with power. Somebody holler power. And Apollos was a good preacher, uh, but he was preaching, but he didn't have any power. Acts 18 and 25 declares that this Apollos that he finds here at Corinth was mighty in the scripture. Again, Acts 18 and 25, he was, say it with me, mighty in the scripture. Look at me, saints of God. Just because you know the word don't mean you have the power of the word. My God, my God. I wish somebody would help me here. Just because you hold bullets in your pocket don't mean you got a gun. Yeah. You have to put the bullets in the gun in order to give you dunamis or to give you power to execute authority. Mm. And saints of God, it's not good for you to be in conflict with Satan and just speak the word only. <laughs> but you got to have not only the word in one hand, you got to have power in the other. Mm. Mm. Praise the Lamb of God. And so he, he got to the point where Apollos could teach the saints how to talk like Christ. But he didn't possess the power to, to watch the saints of God show them how to walk like Christ. Saints of God, do you not know how Christ walked? If Christ came up to a blind man, he wouldn't be blind long. Help me somebody. If he was a deaf man, a mute man, when Jesus showed up, he wouldn't be deaf and mute long. And can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's one thing to pray for people. It's another thing to lay hands and change people. I want to park her in the message, will you? And I just want to see if your neighbor has any power. Lean over and lay your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and just simply say, Saint, whatever you're going through, I lay hands on you in the name of Jesus. Come on, keep holding that hand and say, I neighbor, I rebuke every sickness. Come on, talk to him. I rebuke every heart pain. Come on, and say in the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Now, is there anybody out there that shout about it, that believe that you just don't have words, but you have power? Do I have any young people that say, I'm just not talking about it, I'm going to be about it? 
Somebody help me in this house. Lean over and touch your neighbor and say, if I declare a thing, tell them it will be established. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. And Paul gets to the point, my brothers and sisters, like a master chef. He detects that something was missing from the Christian recipe. Paul knew that, uh, uh, that they had the faith to believe that God could forgive us from all of our sin. That's John's baptism. John's baptism believed that you have received that Jesus has washed away all of your sins. Say amen to that. Amen. You have believed that Jesus has washed away sins past, sins present, sins that you will commit in the future. But the problem that the church had was that they did not believe that the Lord could keep you from sin mm. oh, I wish somebody help me here see John's baptism said I believe that he's my savior Ah, but Jesus' baptism says, but he is my Lord. <laughs> High glory. He just didn't save me, but he gave me power to overcome the Satan. Uh, I wish somebody helped me here. Uh, but he did not have, watch this, the faith. Uh, they had the faith to believe that he could forgive sin. They just didn't have the faith to believe that the Lord could keep them from sin. And the text is tailored to teach us that the, they had never heard this in the gospel before. And saints of God, all across Christendom, we are in growing our churches. But the, the critical question is this. Do believers have any power? Mm. Do any believers have any power? Romans 10 teaches us that faith cometh by hearing. <laughs> and hearing by the word of God. Paul found out that many churches are only teaching saints to the cross. Uh, but they never challenged them to experience Pentecost. Uh, uh, it's fine to get to the cross. And I don't know about you, but I still get happy about the cross, Brother Kevin. When I think about what Jesus done for me on the cross, uh, how they stretched him wide. Uh, he hung his head and then he died. Let me say that again because you may be sitting by somebody this morning that's not really saved. See, if you're saved, you get happy when you hear about the cross. Now because if there's no cross, there cannot be no crowd. Let me see if I can say it again. They nailed his right hand. They nailed his left hand. Y'all, y'all help me. They nailed his feet to the cross. They put a, a crown of thorns on his head. And the Bible said he hung his head and then he died. But I like what the songwriter says, Sister Brenda. The songwriter said, that's not how, my God, the story is. But somebody holler three days later. Hit your neighbor on the right and say, did you hear what the boy said? Say, I'm three days away from getting out of what I'm in. I'm three days away from resurrecting my situation. Somebody holler, I just need three days. Now y'all sitting by somebody from the Presbyterian church. But I need you to hit another believer who understands that as God got Jesus up, he's getting ready to get me up too. Can we park her in the message? and shake a neighbor's hand and say you can take notes later baby but tell him I gotta park right here and give him praise say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and how he got out of the grave I gotta jump on my feet and tell him thank you Thank you, Lord. High five, five people tell them, I thank them anyway. I got some stuff going on, but I'm getting ready to nail it to the cross. I'm nailing my pain to the cross. I'm nailing my condemnation to the cross. I'm nailing it to the cross. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Nor has it entered into the heart what God is getting ready to do. High five your neighbor. Say, nail it to the cross, baby. No matter what you're going through he hung up for your hang up shake a neighbor's hand say he hung high for my hung up in the name of Jesus you ought to sit down and be happy about it you ought to sit down and be happy about it but the songwriter said that's not how uh, uh, the story is three days later he got up uh, not with some power uh, 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 somebody help me he didn't get up uh, 
with some power. But, but he got up. Oh my God, my God. He got up with all power. And like Apollos, many of us are gifted. We are fervent about Christ. We are faithful in attempting the tabernacle of prayer. But many of us cannot tell. And many of us are missing something in our lives. And I got to tell you, scoot up close, saints of God. You are missing the fullness of God's Holy Spirit. Oh my God, my God. And what are the signs then, Pastor Clayton, that he had not the power of the Spirit? Paul had noticed their mindset towards certain things. They grieved about what they had done, but they lacked conviction uh, when they had wronged their own neighbor. Uh, I'm getting ready to teach now. Uh, yes, uh, you ought to be upset with yourself sometime. When, when your mouth is too loose, you say, uh, y'all ain't going to say amen now. When, when you're just talking off the top of your head and telling folks what you're not going to do and what I'm not going to put up with, shut your mouth. Y'all ain't, ain't nobody going to help me through here. See, and, and Paul noticed uh, they were in Corinth shouting, but they couldn't control their mouth. Uh, y'all ain't going to help me here. They, they had come out of the world. Uh, but listen to this the world had not come out of them they were sanctified but still smoking cigarettes y'all got quiet y'all ain't gonna help me here they, they they would pray sometime but watch porn in secret y'all y'all can't help me here they they they, they would want everybody else to be under control and, and be right uh, but they, they they were wrong in their own mind they they thought evil of one another y'all got quiet they, they they judged one another they gossiped behind each other back and paul looked among the congregation and said something is missing mm. Uh, and I don't know about you my brothers and sisters he saw a, a liaison fair shot on money but didn't know God Monday through Saturday y'all y'all ain't gonna help me but y'all sit there I'm coming to get you in just a moment mm. and what he found out that the, uh, they grieved because they had a knowledge of God but they never wanted to change on the conviction and I want to tell you my brothers and sisters uh, you, 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 you not only want to watch this live like Christ but you got to want to have a separated life before him and everything that held you captive when you were in the world when you came to the Lord you got to tell the Lord I don't want it no more I don't want to be saved and be a hoe. Y'all, y'all, y'all help me. Listen, I, want to, I, don't want to, I don't want to confess his blessings and use cussings at the same time. I don't want to speak a, a blessful words and be bitter all the time. And there's some saints in here. My God, I don't know if you save or not. You look ugly at folks, all of y'all. Y'all ain't going to say, man, ain't never got no smile on your face. God ain't touch your countenance. You, you don't know how to go over and be nice to nobody. Y'all ain't going to help me. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. But, uh, but what I noticed, he noticed that they did not have a hunger. My God. They did not notice that they, they wanted God in their presence, but they didn't have any patience. They didn't have any peace. They didn't have unspeakable joy. See, when you got unspeakable joy, look up here, saints of God. When you got unspeakable joy, you can go through stuff and it don't change your smile. Oh, my God. I just need somebody to help me a little while longer. No matter how dark it is, no matter if the money's funny, no matter if the child is acting crazy, you still can look your eyes to the hills from with come of your help and say, great is thy faith. It is well with my soul. If God brought me out of yesterday, he can bring me through today. It ain't never over until God says it's over. I wish I had a witness here to say you got to have faith even in times where you can't see your way. Talk to me, somebody in here. Not jealousy, but hunger for more of God. And the Apostle Paul could tell that they had repentance now. And they had accepted Christ. But he recognized something. I said something. I said something. Somebody help me. Something. Something was missing. They both needed it. But Paul had to challenge them. It's just not me noticing that you need it. You got to want it. 
Scoot up close. Can I help y'all? Do you know people that you love and you want them to do better and live better? It's good that you need them to do better. You want them to do better. But if they don't want to do better on their own, y'all not going to help me. Y'all sitting there just looking at me. But you got to want to change, y'all. You got you to gotta want to do better. You got to come to God telling him, I don't want to talk like this. I don't want to be like this. I want control of my diet. I want control of my appetite. I want control of the thoughts are in my head. And that's why the Bible said, casting down every imagination that exalt itself above the knowledge of God don't you know that what you don't know about God will hurt you y'all not going to help me here and every time Satan tempts you he tempts you based upon what you don't know that's why the Bible says that we cannot remain ignorant of Satan's devices in other words he used what you don't know against you help me somebody here but when you get full of the Holy Ghost and you get full of the power the Bible says uh, that the Holy Ghost is a good teacher and he teaches you not some things, he'll teach you all things. When God took a little old black boy from Malvern, Arkansas, a little country town, he took me to college. I didn't know the physiology terms, nephrons. I, I didn't understand molecular structure, but when I was in there I had the Holy Ghost rise up in me and begin to explain to me what nephrons were, how molecules move. Y'all not going to help me here. Understand business dialect it wasn't because I knew it but the Holy Ghost knows everything y'all uh, uh, somebody holler everything hmm. Lean over, touch your neighbor and say, he'll help you where you need help. And that's why the Bible declares, he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Anybody ever been in trouble? Matter of fact, some of y'all are in trouble right now. And you don't know what to do and don't know who to call. But if you get full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy, my God, knows how to stand up and help you. Make it through what you're going through. My God, my God. Somebody holler Holy Ghost. Somebody holler Holy Ghost. Now throw up both your hands and say, I want it. No, no, I'm still waiting on y'all. I see some of you need it. If you're going to make it through what you're going through. Now throw up both your hands and say, I want it. No, yeah, now you almost there. Now you said it for me. Now I need you to look in your own life and look at where you're broken and what you're missing and what you're lacking and what you need in your home and how direction that you need. And I need you to say to yourself within your song, if I may touch but the hem of his garment, if I touch him today, I can get what I need. I can go to a place I've never been before. Throw both up your hands and say, I want it. I can't hear nobody. Choir, do you want? Ministers, do you want? Members, do you want? Children, do you want? Now, high five your name and say, I gotta have it. I can't change my kids without it. I can't make it without it. I can't do God's business without it. I can't pastor without it. I can't be a husband without it. I can't be a wife without it. Somebody throw up both your hands and say, I want it. 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 I got to have it. I got to have it. I can't lead the same way. I got to have it. Somebody help me praise them right there. I want it. I want it. Yeah, pastor, you talking to me today. I can't lead the same way. I don't want to cuss. Y'all ain't going to help me here. I don't want to lead the same, God. I want it, God. I want it. I got to have it. In the name of Jesus. Praise your holy name. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he holy? Come on, y'all stay in the anointing. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it for my kids. I want it. I want it for my wife. I want it. I want it. I want it for every child in here. I want it. And somebody say, I got to have it. First Samuel chapter three, verse seven says, and Samuel knew something. He knew that God had a calling on his life. But the Bible says in first Samuel three and seven, Something in his life was missing. What was missing? That caused him not to know the Lord. 
what was missing in his life to cause him for his place in religion to come to a halt. Saints, you can do church until you're good at it. You can do church. Y'all not going to say amen to this. But you can do church and don't grow in your joy. Y'all not going to help me. You can do church and don't grow in your character and integrity. All you have is you just been in church a long time. Y'all not going to help me here. Your prayer life won't stretch. Y'all help me. Your discernment is still in the same place. You can't discern between, my God, a cat and a mosquito. My God, help me hear somebody. But, but I kind of tell you that Samuel got to the place that uh, he just didn't want the calling of the God without the power of God. And saints of God, you got to get to a place in your life where you want to be filled over the brim. I said over. David's prayer in Psalm, my God, 23, was just not for his cup to be filled. He said, but I want something on the inside of me that will overflow. Huh? And I want to know if there are any brothers and sisters in here that want the overflow anointing. <laughs> Somebody holler overflow. Overflow till it gets on my saucer. Uh, well, my neighbor feels that anointing. Yeah. Praise the Lamb of God. And saints of God, as I, as I begin to move closer to the end of my message, Paul says, have you, my God, received, listen, such since you have believed? He has posed the question. Scoot up close, church. Young people, can I ask you, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Uh, see, on that question, you can't look around. You can't, you can't join hands and, and get it with somebody else. You got to go get it for yourself. <laughs> My grandmother had it. My mama had it. Oh, my God. And uh, one day I said, Mama Power can't get me through this. Help me. Uh, Grandma Power can't get me through this. I'm going to get it for myself. Oh, my God. <laughs> And young people, I got to tell you this morning, uh, you can't make it on your mama's religion. Help me. <laughs> you can't make it on your daddy's power. <laughs> Lay your hand on your bosom and say, I got to go get this one for myself. Uh, and what I love about the Holy Ghost, my God, is somebody beside you. I felt something come up on me. I say, you got to go get this one by yourself. <laughs> Baby, you got to go get this one mm. <laughs> by yourself. <laughs> And the first thing that you must do to receive what's missing, write this down. Number one, you must examine your biblical history. Examine your biblical history. The Ellicott commentary suggests that many seem not to have heard that there is a Holy Ghost and others think of it as a delusion. Do you believe that God can do great demonstrations in you and through you? Do you believe that God can use your ugly, short, nails never done hand to lay hands on somebody and they can see again? My God, ain't nobody going to help me in here. Do you believe God can use your cross-hided, crooked wig, stank breath? Y'all, ain't nobody going to help me through here. I, my God, say, lay your hand on your book and say, he can use me. Yeah. My God, God can use the ordinary to do extraordinary things. Because I got to tell you, you may go around telling my Lord, I'm, 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 I'm quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm quiet. I don't, I don't, I don't talk loud. I, I'm, I'm afraid to speak in front of people. I, Jeanette, I don't really sing in front of people. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. But can I tell you that Psalm 34 declares that the righteous are as bold as a lion. In other words, you can be a puny lady, but did you not? see mama Ann come up here five foot one y'all ain't gonna help me grab the mic for me and say I've got something to tell you about my Jesus I tell you that I almost died three times but she hauled off and said but God my God and I know somebody in here to know that when the Holy
Holy Ghost comes on you. You used to be shy, but now you can be bold as a lion. Look over at your neighbor before they go to sleep. Eyeball to eyeball. Look at him and just roar at him and say, my God, I need somebody in here from Africa, Nigeria that's seen a lion before. Y'all help me here. And look over on the other side and say, when the enemy come, I'm going to scare him. Though he acts like a roaring lion. Lay your hand on your bosom and say, I am a roaring lion. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Lean over and hit your neighbor and say, neighbor, your victory is in your mouth. And you got to say something. My God, you got to jump on your feet and say something. Well, pastor, what should I say? You ought to say to yourself, better is on the way. And my God, high five the neighbor, say better, better. Scream at him and say better is on his way to my house we will not stay where we are but I'm getting ready to go to higher heights come on clap your hands and deeper dimensions I'm getting ready to speak in tongues I'm getting ready to walk on water somebody holler better 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 for my kids better for my wife better for my church somebody holler better somebody holler better not only pay the more but I'm getting ready to pay two mortgages pay my mama's house off somebody holler better touch somebody say I'm getting ready to move I'm getting ready to move baby tell somebody pack your bags I'm not staying where I am I'm getting ready somebody holler better touch two people on your way to your seat and say better's on the way better better Oh God, oh God, come on Bella, my God, I'm almost there, oh God help me, help me Lord, help me, Bella somebody, I'm talking to somebody today, tired of ordinary, tired of being where you are, tired of struggling where you are, somebody help me here, tired of rubbing two pennies together, tired of being happy Monday and miserable on Wednesday. Somebody holler better, better, better. Tired of only getting along with your spouse when something's going right. Y'all help me here. Uh, tired of fussing all the time. Tired of always having to express yourself. Tired, tired, tired of asking for gas money. Y'all, ain't nobody going to help me in here. Somebody holler better one more time. Uh, so he said, first of all, examine yourselves. Church, Paul is encouraging them. Uh, he says, have you not heard in other words where's your biblical foundation who has taught you about the holy ghost who has not taught you about the unlocking of god's power if you've been in a place and in a church that hadn't taught you about the power of god then they have robbed you from living the abundant life saint john 10 and 10 says the enemy i wish i had some help comes to kill to steal and destroy he said but i i my God, I have come. Wow. Who is the I? He's the great I am. Chin Windu, you better come get me. I said, he's the great I am. He said, but I come that you might have life. And not just some ordinary life. But life more. Mm, my God. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. So you have to examine your biblical history. That's number one. Number two, you have to accept what you don't know. Look what they said unto response to Paul. We have known no such thing. Luke denotes that Paul's teaching method is helping these 12 men walk in receiving the gift of the Spirit. He teaches through question and answer. He says to them, have you received? They respond to him, no, I have not. Scoot up close, church. Can I tell you this? When you want something from God, you got to talk to him. And when you come to the altar in a minute, don't sit here with your mouth closed and your hands up thinking you want to receive it. You have to tell him, I want it. And you got to tell him why you want it. I remember the day the Lord filled me with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. 
I was a young man. I was miserable. My God. My God. I, made, I had my car. I had, I had a little money. I was on my way to college. But I could detect something in my life was missing. My God. I had to wait on circumstances and happenings to take place in my life in order for me to be happy. And I saw the saints of God who loved God. Didn't have two pennies to rub together. But they had faith. My God. To believe that God was an awesome God. They always had something good to say and encourage others and I told God I don't want to leave church all the time I don't want to be great at church I want what she got I, oh my God I, I, want, I want to leave here with power that's not predicated on my circumstances and when I got to that altar my God my God I lifted my hands and I began to tell God why I felt like I needed his power I told him I'm empty without you my God I need something that is beyond the natural. I don't want to be natural. I want to live a life that is beyond my circumstances. I want to do something greater than my father did. I want to be better than where my brother is going. I wish somebody help me. I feel the Holy Ghost upon me right now. Praise the Lord. But when you want to change, when you want to get rid of homongering, hanging out with folks that don't mean you're no good and you can't get away from them because you're addicted to their friendship, God has a power. Yeah. My God. He has a power huh, that if you ask for it, somebody holler, if you ask for it, if you ask for it, you got to ask for it. And I told God I don't want to be the same. And I got to that place of that altar and I cried out to God. And I told him, Lord, whatever I got to do, I'm not leaving this altar until you bless me. I said, I'm not leaving until you bless me. I had the Jacob anointing on me. Jacob wrestled with the Lord all night long. And he wrestled with him. He held on. He tugged. The angel said, man, get off of me. He said, I'm not going to let you go, my God. Somebody holler, Lord, I'm not going to let you go today. Ah, say it like you mean it. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me and some of you have been filled but you ain't spoken tongue in a long time ah uh, yeah I'm talking to you too because Paul had to teach the church also that there is a feeling he said but you gotta ask God to be filled again <laughs> how many know life can be hard life can be hard you, you can go through breakups and divorce uh, you can go through stuff that made you bitter I'm talking to somebody in here. You, you can go through stuff in life that make you cold. The Bible says, be careful not to let your heart wax cold. And, and some of you, my God, when you was on fire for God, you were so pleasant to be around. Now we pass you and you walk around like a dead mummy. Uh, uh, we don't even know if anybody in you is alive because life has robbed you. It has taken from you the precious thing that you have and that's joy in the Holy Ghost. When you got joy in in the Holy Ghost, you can smile in every situation. My God, you can come into the tabernacle and you don't need no cheerleader to help you praise God. You don't need nobody to stand up, tell you, lift your hands and turn around three times. But no, all you got to do is start thinking and you'll start thanking Him. When you start thinking, thinking about where you were, thinking about how he brought you out, thinking about the drugs you used to do, thinking about the situation you were, all it takes is one thought of God. Oh, my God. And the rivers of joy will begin to flow in your heart. Let somebody raise your hands right now and worship for 20 seconds and just give them a thank you offering. Is there anybody? Thank him. Is that how quiet it is? I don't know. I don't know if you've been where I've been. Oh, God. If you knew where I'd be, my God. If you knew what he saved me from, I don't know how you sit there, but if you could look at my life, see, I should have been in prison. I, I should have lost my mind. When I begin to think of the goodness of Jesus and all, oh, my God, my God, and all, oh, ha, 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 how all he's done for me my soul somebody holler says hallelujah oh my god i gotta get out of here i gotta get out of here but somebody tell the lord thank you thank you lord and that's what you do when you come to the altar in a moment you gotta tell the lord thank you thank you for keeping me thank you for raising me up uh, some of us come out of broken homes 
come out of seeing abuse, come out of racism and debauchery, come out of poverty. Y'all ain't going to say amen. Come out of pain and misery. Come out of depression. Y'all not going to say amen to this. You ain't educated. You just got favor on your life. Sitting around. You ain't said thank you all morning. That job you got ain't cost you so smart. It's cost the Lord open a door for you. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? It ain't cost you so good you can cook. But God whispered to you. Put a little salt in here. Add a little sugar right there. And you was able to feed your family. God ain't going to help me here. In that one bedroom apartment. With that vinyl on the floor. Roaches around. But you had a little pine salt didn't you? And God showed you how to keep it clean. When you didn't even have a house. Y'all now that you wanted. You to tell the Lord thank you sometime my God every time you pass a drunk and you see him you ought to lose your mind in the car and say Lord it could have been me I could have been under the bridge I could have lost my mind when you hear somebody went to prison you say Lord thank you thank you you kept me you gave me a second chance I could have been them I should have been them but I wave my head and say thank you thank you Oh, God, help us today. Oh, God, help us. Something is missing. Something is missing. Something is missing. The last thing I got to tell you, what Paul told them. Paul said, y'all got a good foundation. But now is the day that I encourage you. You got to push away from the bank. (laughs) Some of you learn how to fish. But you only fish around the bank. You good as long as you in shallow water. But see, when you get the Holy Ghost, not only can you walk on deep water. Oh, my God. I said, not only can you walk in deep, on deep water, but you can survive in deep water. Oh, my God. Somebody holler, I found a missing piece. Mm, my God. And I got to close here by telling you uh, that it's not that you have not received an impartation of the Holy Ghost. The Bible declares that when we have received Christ, then it is at that moment that the Holy Ghost comes in and be with us. But what the Lord is saying in the text today, he's saying that when you don't have the fullness of the Holy Ghost, then you only have a portion of the process. Y'all not going to help me here. And God's desire is for you to have somebody holler, everything. No, 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 no. I need y'all to come to the hood with me. I didn't say everything. Y'all, y'all help me here. That's bougie, y'all. But I need you to say everything. Now, now say it like you missing some teeth on the left side. Say it like my grandmother on the porch. Somebody say he can handle everything. Yeah. Y'all not going to help me here. I, I got to close by telling you a story about the butterfly and the caterpillar. Mm. And this is what he's saying when something was missing. See? The caterpillar said to the butterfly, he said, uh, the caterpillar was looking at the butterfly. He said these words. He said, man, I'm jealous. Uh, Butterfly said to the caterpillar, why are you jealous? He said, because I'm tired of always crawling around here. And every day I look at you, you always of flying high. Y'all, oh my God. He said, uh, I'm sick and tired of, uh, of you going places uh, that I wish I could go in God. Uh, he said, uh, he said, and I got to tell you, he says, uh, I'm tired of crawling in God. Uh, he said, I want God to give me some wings. Uh, y'all sitting there looking at me. Uh, praise the Lamb of God. And the butterfly said to him, he said, "Uh, you don't know this. He said, but there is really no difference between you and me. He said, the only difference between you and me is just that you haven't finished the process. (laughs) Somebody help me through here. Lean over and shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, say the only difference between you and me is that you haven't finished the process. 
Do I have any witnesses out there? And then the butterfly, he told Mother Alva, he told the caterpillar, he said, all you got to do to get what I got, he said, is get in the secret place. Do somebody got to help me here? He said, what I did, he said, all I did to get my wings to fly high and stop hanging down low he said I hopped in the cocoon and I wish you lean over and shake your neighbor's hand and say get in the secret place yes somebody holler the secret place he said because in the secret place it may be dark right where you are but if you get in the secret place he said they that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody out there that's been in the secret place? If you have, you ought to stand on your feet and say, neighbor, I'm not a caterpillar no more, but tell them, neighbor, tell him I'm flying high because I've got the Holy Ghost do I have any witnesses out there that because you received the Holy Ghost I'm not the same anymore I'm not going to the same level anymore but somebody holler I want it I need it say I want it somebody holler I need it and I'm not leaving until I get the Holy Ghost clap your hands and make some noise I said clap your hands and make a joyful noise while you're clapping the altar team is coming keep clapping close your eyes and keep clapping come on I want you to prepare your heart while you're clapping come on I want you to get into your most secret your most secret emotions